They don't know or have a thorough understanding of their political system. Thus, you make people vulnerable uh, and subject to the exploitation of people who, you know, are going to exploit power politically and from a monetary standpoint. And that's one point that I actually mostly agree with. The truth is, people that study science, technology, engineering, and mathematics are definitely smarter than people that study political science, people that study history, and people that study anthropology. This is actually not the truth, and I believe the emphasis on STEM and STEM-related subjects unintentionally has contributed to the rise of anti-intellectual culture. I'm not trying to discredit STEM or the intellectual rigor that's involved, but there's an idea... So with this video, the premise of this video is, are STEM students smarter than humanity students? And it's analyzing the impact that STEM has had on specifically American culture. If you don't know me, my name is Jovan Hall. I am an optoelectronics engineer. I have my bachelor's in optical engineering, my master's in electrical engineering, and I am a researcher. That's what I do. I'm not going to say specifically what I do, obviously, but I, that's what I do. Um, so this is very interesting. Um, <laughs> I'm excited to get into this one, and I'll give my thoughts a little later that the philosopher is obsolete. There's an idea that the artist is obsolete. There's an idea that the historian is obsolete. These ideas have been generated by a culture that believes if your knowledge does not directly tie into some sort of profit, some sort of monetary value, then it is not relevant. And this gives rise to the idea that people that are in STEM, once again, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, are innately smarter and have more acumen than those in the humanities. This caustic idea that all knowledge has to orient around profit and the monetary value of something has also adversely impacted STEM. You would think with the plethora of people that are going into science, the plethora of people that are in engineering and mathematics and the health field, we would have moved as a society towards a, a, a paradigm where medical care is more readily available. You know, we have more biodegradable products. We're doing things from a scientific perspective that won't just benefit a company, but will benefit society. Okay, so let me give a little insight on what he's saying. He's practically relating STEM to profitability, and that's why STEM is becoming more popular. And he's possibly also talking about the... I guess the superiority complex he believes a lot of people in STEM have. And as someone with a master's degree in electrical engineering, I do want to say that studying STEM is harder than studying the humanities. And I know I know that's a taboo thing to say, but it's 100% true. It takes more critical thinking. The subject in general is just much more difficult, and it has a larger and harder barrier of entry than humanities. I think that's just a fact. For example, researchers, engineers created the internet, the thing that you're using to even say this video. I'm not going to say that all people in engineering or all people in STEM are smarter than people in the humanities because that's obviously not true and intelligence is subjective. However, on average, it does take more intellectual ability to study STEM and that's just the truth. That's just, that's just what it is. Um, what he's what he's where he's messing up is this people in STEM aren't the ones running the profits. They aren't the business people doing it. They're the people in the labs researching the things, creating the findings. And even now, he's not he's not fully understanding how complex chemistry is in this instance. He's not fully, in my opinion, understanding how complex engineering is um, to say, oh, how come we're not further along in these categories? Cancer research takes a long time. Medical research takes a very long time. And it's very, very complex stuff. So, yes, we probably aren't as far as we, as he thinks we should be, but we're making progress. And that stuff takes an extremely long time. Not trying to down or deflate how important humanities are. They're obviously extremely important. In my opinion, I think they're just as important as STEM. I don't think one is above the other. Um, in terms of importance for society. I do, however, believe one is objectively harder than the other when you're studying it in school for the average person. When you start going into getting a PhD or getting a master's, I think that whole narrative shifts 
because a PhD in philosophy or a PhD in humanities is obviously pretty difficult. You would have to create your own research. However, a PhD in engineering is also pretty difficult. They're, they're both difficult. I don't find the purpose of comparing which one is harder or which one is not. But since we are doing that, engineering is harder at every level in terms of analytical thinking and ability at large and that's not the case really all stem is churning out is people that are smart enough to figure out you know certain algorithms as it relates to mathematics certain computer code and go in and help a company make money these people that are coming out of STEM are not doing anything from an intellectual standpoint that really benefits the entire populace. The other danger with STEM is that it can turn a culture apolitical. You have people that, you know, they feel that maybe I got an A in physics or I received an A in biology or I received an A in calculus that that is enough. You don't really need to learn the political history of your country. You don't need to study philosophy. You don't need to understand any sort of like cultural anthropology. And the danger in this is that while you have a population, they may be ca capable of carrying out, you know, maybe complex subjects related to, to mathematics and science. You have a population that's historically impotent. Um, they don't know or have a thorough understanding of their political system. Thus, you make people vulnerable uh, and subject to the exploitation of people who, you know, are going to exploit power politically and from a monetary standpoint. And that's one point that I actually mostly agree with. While I do believe STEM is in general or in gener generally harder than humanities from a learning standpoint, from an analytical standpoint, I do, however, believe a lot of engineers or a lot of scientists do things that aren't that important. For example, if you are at the top of your class for engineering and you go to a company where all you do is try to manipulate an algorithm so people can spend two more minutes per day scrolling through ads online, I personally don't think that's that important. You will get a lot of money. You will get a lot of acumen. But in terms of societal importance, it's not important. It's not going to benefit society in a meaningful way. It hasn't always been like this. For example, even the internet was created by the government, by a team of researchers, by a team of engineers. That's importance. Cancer research, medical research was created by engineers. Oh, not engineers, my apologies. Chemists and researchers, that's important. But a lot of the things that we're getting into nowadays aren't that important. They're used to manipulate algorithms and to make money. Not saying the field isn't important itself, but a lot of the people who get into it, I believe get into it for the wrong reasons. And also, I still believe humanity should be learned if you are in any sort of STEM field because you do have the power to, dr to dramatically change the world. And if you do not understand history, if you do not understand the impact that this will have on society, then you will be more apathetic. You will be less inclined to make a real change, uh, a positive change in the world. So you should know about these subjects. And if you believe that you are more academically gifted, why can't you learn about these subjects if you believe they're so easy? If you believe that they're so easy and so basic, you should that should push you even more towards learning about it. The whole point that I'm getting at is that I don't believe STEM and humanities are a competition. I believe both should be taught to everyone. I believe that coding is the future. I believe that it's extremely important. I also believe that you should know humanities. You shouldn't just double down on one or the other. And that's what schools kind of do. But both can give you insight. Both can make you a better thinking. Philosophy thinkers and computer scientists actually have more in common than they want to admit. Nonetheless, let's continue. And so it's not good for society. It actually kind of dumbs down society in a way because you have to have an amalgamation of equilibrium. You have to have your what? mathematics and science, but you also have to have your linguists. You also have to have your historians. You also have to have your writers. You also have to have um, your anthropologists. These things, you know, political science, sciences, pardon me, are just as important. Let me know what you think in the comments. I think they're, yeah, I would say the subjects are I would say they're just as important. You might disagree. I still believe STEM is harder. I don't think that one is easy. I don't think that humanities is on the same level of difficulty as STEM. 
that's just not true. And that's someone who studies STEM. Obviously, I've taken humanities courses, not super high level humanities courses, but I've got a I got a master's in engineering, bro. It's it's very difficult. It's very intuitive. It's not as black and white as people paint it out to be. Electrons and photons sometimes do things that currently are unexplainable. But nonetheless, let me know what you guys think about this video. Yeah.